Hello my friends, good to see you again. So in the previous section, we deployed the jump host as well as ran through some of the prerequisites and preparing our environment to ensure that our installation of a Nutanix Kubernetes platform is going to be as smooth as possible. So in this section, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating a couple of SSL certs and deploying Harbor. So let's get started. So I've already logged into my jump host. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a directory called certs and in our prerequisites blog post we actually installed this tool called step cli so step cli is actually installed over here and what step allows us to do is to very easily create certificates so what we all need to do is just to copy this command over here under the certificates section and paste it into the directory right so i'll just cd over into certs and we can paste it in. So what this command does is that it's telling step to create a certificate called WSKN root CA, which is going to be our root certificate. The certificate will be stored as WSKN root hyphen CA dot cert. And the key is going to be WSKN root hyphen CA dot key. And the profile is going to be of type root CA and it's going to have a 10 year expiry. Now, I'm not going to be saving this with a password. It is bad practice. But if you're doing this in production environment, please ensure you follow all the best practices. It's not going to be stored with a password, so no password. And because it's not going to be stored with a password, we need to specify the insecure flag. Lastly, the key type is going to be of type RSA. And creating this, this will allow my root CA certificate as well as key to be created. So if we were to take a look at the details of the certificate, x509 in swskm root CA dot key dot cert. and text and no out this gives us the details of the certificate itself so we can see it's a 10 year expiry and the next step would be to create an intermediate certificate right so the intermediate certificate same thing just that this time around instead of us specifying the profile type to be of type root ca it's going to be intermediate ca and we're going to be passing in the root ca's certificate as well as root ca's key it's, it's going to be having an expiry of 10 years Safe without a password and the key type is going to be of type RSA. And the last one would be to create the actual server certificates and keys itself. So uh, it's going to be step certificate create WSKN uh, local, right? Because my domain is called WSKN.local. Uh, it's going to be stored in server.cert and the key is going to be stored in server.key. The CA I'm going to be using is the intermediate CA. Same for the key. I'm going to be storing it without any passwords and it's uh, insecure. Then we have got this flex called send. So a send is essentially a subject alternate name. So we need to specify all the, all the sends that we potentially might be using within our lab environment. So the first one is wskn.local. The second one is going to be wildcard for wskn.local. And the last one is going to be a double wildcard for subdomains inside the wskn.local domain. Then your expiry and key type is going to be RSA. Now the last step would be to concatenate the intermediate CA as well as the root CA into a single CA chain. With this, what we can do is we can upload the CA chain whenever we are trying to configure any form of TLS communications. So that's is simply just copy the commands. And this will give us the entire CA chain. So the next step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be deploying the Harbor registry. So we click on create VM. Let's call this registry. It's a management component, so I'll place it in the management cluster. Give it eight CPUs and 16 gigs of memory. I'm going to be attaching these and cloning it from the 24.04 image. And I'll give it 100 gigs for the operating system. I will attach it to the management primary subnet and assign a static IP of 10.168.100.6. I already have got an FQDN that is set in my DNS server. Right, so it's registry 10.168.100.6. UEFI BIOS mode for boot. And I will use the cloud init that I have prepared for the guest customization. I can go ahead and create. 
Now what it's creating, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a new volume group. So this volume group will be used to hold the container image data directory. So let's create a new volume group. I'll just call this Arbor, Arbor Volume PG. It's going to be hosted on a management cluster and I'm going to be adding six disks. Next, and I'm going to be attaching this directly to a virtual machine. So I'll just call this regist search for registry and I'll use the load balance volume group capabilities. Next, and create. So once that is done, we can power on the registry. Wait for it to boot. And now that the VM is booted, we can SSH into the virtual machine itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is elevate permissions, change my host name. And if we would take a look at all the drives that we have, we see that we've got six disks that comes from the volume group. So what we're going to do is we're going to initialize that, that set of disks. First thing we need to do is we need to make sure that some of the, a couple of the packages are installed, LVM as well as XFS prox. Configure some of the kernel parameters for storage optimization. So vm.swapiness equals to 10, vm.dirty ratio equals to 15, vm.dirty background ratio equals to 5. Then we are going to set the SCSI timeout to 60 for all the devices. And we're going to ensure that multipath tools are installed and the service is started. So we need to check that the drives are clean. Great. And we're going to be creating the physical volumes on all the uh, drives. Check that it's successfully created. Great. Then we're going to be creating the volume group on all the devices. Then we're going to be creating a logical volume with 2.9 terabytes. Verify the logical volume. And that is striped. Looks good. Lastly, what we'll do is we'll create the XFS file system for the logical volume. Create a mount point. Tree slash hover. And then we'll set it to point to the FS step. System CTL reload daemon reload and mount iPhone A to ensure that it's mounted. So then we can check that we have got stuff that it is now mounted. We see that it's mounted, it looks good. Next, what we want to do is to copy over the certificates that I have in my slash home slash ubuntu folder and i'm going to move this slash home slash ubuntu folder certificates into slash harbor great next step what we need to do is we need to install docker so it's not installed out of the box so we need to go into the prerequisites page let's scroll down and look for the harbor installation set of commands and we can just paste it in. So once that is done, we can scroll down to the internal registry section and fill in some of the environment variables. So this is correct, these two are correct. What I need to do is I need to change the CF cert path goes to other certificates server cert key path is other certificates server dot key and CA chain will be this Then this command essentially allows us to download the latest version of Harbor from GitHub. So you download both the offline installer as well as the online installer. Great. So what we can do is we can extract the offline installer and then CD into the actual Harbor directory and load the 
harbor container image. So this allows us to load the images directly from the local harbor cache instead of us having to pull from like a Docker Hub or any container registry that is out in the out in the public internet. Great. So this copies the Harbor installation template into the actual Harbor installation YAML. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating the directories within the file system so that it trusts the certificates of our self sign certs. So this command automatically detects whether it's a Red Hat, Fedora, Rocky, or Ubuntu operating system and then install the certificates for us. So once that is done, we can restart the Docker engine. And then configure the Harbor installation YAML file automatically using the SED command. So the next step would be to edit the installation file and head over into the to change the directory of the data folder. So instead of data volume being slash data, I'm going to be putting it under slash Harbor. Great. Then the next step would be to dot slash prepare. To prepare the harbor to prepare the harbor configurations and dot slash install so once that is done we can head over into a browser and access it via the registry dot wskn dot local url and great that we see that it uses our ssl certificates and we can log in using the default admin harbor one two three four five username and password so i'll change this later on so that's it. So in the next section, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be downloading the Nutanix Kubernetes platform agap bundle from the Nutanix portal and populating the registry with the image bundle. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.